What's up ladies and gents, uh, Patrick back with another Waiting Tables Masterclass video. Today is going to be part two of the guest is all that matters. So um, let's just hop right into it and continue where we left off. You know, excuse me, I'm drinking coffee here. Um, it's funny, yesterday I filmed the video and I felt like it was, I felt like it was really long. There was a lot of material but then I looked at my notes and I saw there's a part two video and I was like, I was like, holy crap, how is that even possible? And then I looked through the lines and the notes and I'm like, wow, totally is possible. So the guest truly is all that matters. And today I want to visualize, I want you to visualize the guest, the guests, the table as being sort of a castle, sovereign, royal, um, transcendent um, a type of experience where people can be comfortable and relaxed in public and enjoy the finest food and wine and enjoy company with friends family um, business partners uh, dates you know why are people going out to your restaurant it's good to know it's good to think about why why are they there now you can tailor the experience to them. But treating your table like, you know, it's their table and you're there to do your best to honor and respect that experience and the sacred experience of service uh, and fine dining or just good good food and a good time, you know, it makes, it makes a big difference. And you know it does, you know, if you've had a bad week you go out with some friends or family or a girl or a guy you like, you know. You know, so um, so let's hop right into that, into the details. And first of all, um, I'm just going to go down the list. So, uh, I, uh, I studied interpersonal communication in college as my minor. And... Um, I think it's really helped me waiting tables. So just like uh, I was saying earlier that the majority of communication is nonverbal. So a lot of what you say, a lot of a lot of what you say and how you say or a lot of how what you say is received by others is how you say it. So um important to keep in mind. But I want to say please never say to your guest no problem. I absolutely hate it. When people say no problem um, to me in a restaurant dining environment because if you think about it again the guest has to eat but he he or she doesn't have to eat at your restaurant you know the guest is not inconveniencing you you're getting to make a living because someone else has chosen not to cook for themselves and not to clean up after themselves <laughs> Or not to get up from the table and go to where the food was made and take it back to the table. So you see how incredibly simple what we do is and why we should be... I'm not saying it's easy or that you can't do it marvelously or with great style and grace because obviously it is special and you can make it special but what I'm saying is at the end of the day they don't have to be there. So you should never say no problem to somebody because it still implies that there could be a problem or that they might be inconveniencing you, you know? So don't say no problem to a guest. Say my pleasure or say positively, you got it. Uh, or, you know, you got it. Or I don't know, you know, even then you hear, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sound positive now and even I'm, I'm sounding a little like I could be sounding sarcastic. So. This is how, what you have to watch in your own tone of voice. You have to learn how to communicate genuinely, enthusiastically, positively, gratefully. And, you know, my pleasure is great because it's over-the-top service-oriented. Um, you know, and again, interspersed with sirs and misses. You can, uh, you, you can razzle-dazzle your guest. Also, if you can come about their name which is not your priority but if you can or if you can find a way to work in your name you know yesterday I said uh, you can work your name into 
right before you leave to get the drink order. But then there's also other ways to get their names. Um, quick tip, and I cover this in my free videos on YouTube, when you drop your check at the end of the meal and if they pay with credit card, it's often very good to write thank you, Mr. or Miss, or Mrs., uh, whatever their last name, you get their name off the credit card, or you can say their first name, write it down on the credit card, and then write like a exclamation point with a star and a smile. You know, I mean, stuff like that. <laughs> that was my bread and butter. I'd write their name and say thank you and like draw a little picture and a smile and make it look excited and happy. And, you know, I averaged 18%, 18 to 20% tips. And I was very, very non BS with my tables. Very, very, very little small talk. Very procedural. Very respectful. Get in, be good, get out. You know, that's my motto. And some people are great at schmoozing and talking. And 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 if and if you can develop a rapport, communicating with your table in a friendly, loving, and you know, and they look at you as your friend, or they look up to you, or you know, love you. That's where the tips are, you know. That's where you get into the 20, 25, 30% range. Um, definitely possible. So, um, so while you're at work, you can be thinking, you know, when you have time, because I've, I've told you to build up your time bank by being on top of everything. But you can start using your mind to hypothesize and theorize at work. You know, like I said, custom tailor that guest's experience how old are they? Don't ask. <laughs> what are their interests? You can ask or you can find out. You can observe them. You can learn a lot by people. You can learn a lot about people just by observing, okay? <laughs> All right, so um, enough about custom tailoring, which is important, but that's advanced stuff. So treat your, treat your guest's table like it's, uh, you know, like a royal castle. Make sure that if you're doing some small talk with fellow servers, you're not three feet away talking loud, laughing, cursing, talking about inappropriate stuff. Not good. If you gotta, if you gotta BS with employees, go outside or go way in the back where no one can hear you. Um, which should be a rare occasion, obviously. But uh, sometimes it's fun to build morale with the other employees. You know, it's good. It's important. But always honor the guest's space. Which means that you should really never touch a guest. Never touch a guest. You know what I mean? Attractive women will often get away with this more than, you know, it's. I think it's uh, generally socially accepted that men don't touch women. And then men aren't really supposed to touch other men, strangers, and, and, real, and, and in a restaurant environment. You really, you don't want to touch anybody. And the guests likely do not want to be touched. Just don't touch the guests. It's that simple. Let's see here. What else? What else? So when the food goes to the table, right, everything's supposed to go all, go out all at once, usually. That's standard restaurant procedure. So let's assume everything goes out at once. And you have, you have a server there. You have a runner with you, maybe another server. You don't get to the table and start asking who has what. You never do that. You always want to know your table positions, your guest positions, and who had what. So it's, because again, that guest is not there to work for you. And if you walk up to the table with a thing full of food and people are like, do you have the steak? You know what I mean? It's like, so rude. So unprofessional. So counter to what it is we're trying to do here with hospitality. So it's called selling food, and you don't go to a table and sell food. Hey, did you have this? Who had this? Who had this? You know, like, don't do it. Figure out your positions beforehand. As a server, make sure when the food comes off the line and people pick it up to drop it off that it's all organized. This is going to be important that you stay organized in your, in your check presenter or wherever you write your notes down and your table information down so that it's all, it all comes out wonderful. Uh, the more clear-headed you are and, and, and calm and focused you are when you input the order in the POS computer or write it down however your restaurant does it most restaurants use a POS that you're gonna uh, put it in properly exactly correct 
So you're going to save a lot of these problems. You're going to save the guests a lot of trouble and inconvenience, and everything is going to be um, everything is going to be all good on that front. So I think that's a I think that's a good sort of standard approach to honoring your guests and uh, and respecting your guests and and learning how to always be positive be gentle be kind be assertive be grace be graceful be be gracious be grateful to your guests even if they're assholes you got to treat them like in a sense that they're generic and that your next table will be nice people and they will care about you not that you should really care because the world is full of assholes um, so those are some good those are some you know the sooner you can get into the zone where you're communicating with your guests easily you're having fun you're making them giggle or laugh you know um, that's where the money is okay and that's where you're gonna feel great about your job and what you're doing and um, you're gonna be happy to be at work which is important so um, that's just some stuff to think about so a couple more things um, I usually pause the video just so I can look over my notes and make sure I covered all the points um, but because the guest is all that matters if you if you run into some problems with your tables or if you're or if you're behind or you're in the weeds as they call it and you sense something bad is going to happen or you're or you're worried that maybe something's going to go wrong at another table because you're dealing with a problem it's okay to approach a manager, a supervisor or even maybe another server that you trust who's not doing anything and say hey and again this is where positive assertive communication comes in because all you're going to do is let people know what you're dealing with and people are going to almost want to jump in to help you and if you say hey you know I'm doing this right now or hey I'm getting um, hey I'm doing three cappuccinos right now uh, my, my one table is, is due to you know have steaks uh, drop we just cleared salads can you set the table for steaks you know with steak knives um, I really need that to happen before the entrees go out, you know? And if you say that, you might not want to do that to a manager because that's kind of like manual work. But even with the manager, you could say, hey, you know, um, they were. You, you know, if you had a different problem, you don't want to get your manager to be like <laughs> doing your work. But, you know, you can ask a manager to help. It shows you're concerned about your guest, which wins you points, which is how you can turn a problem into an opportunity and also even a, an accomplishment. Um, and points with your boss or your coworkers, and again, that's that's the that's the benefit of, of assertive com communication. Saying, "Hey, I'm doing this. I have this going on." It's like it's like when I say, "Hey, can I get you anything?" Notice how I'm not saying you need anything, which is kind of an asshole thing to say, and it's false anyway, because people don't need stuff; they're there because they want stuff, right? But um, can I get you anything, or can I get you another drink? Um. Can I get you anything at this time? Or, you know, again, nonverbal and, and always, when you're not putting the, the guest on the spot, you know, and you're just making it saying like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be doing this anyway. I'm doing, I'm doing this, I'm looking out for this. Can I do this for you? Service, people can turn it down. It's great. Um, you're not saying they're inconveniencing you. Another thing I wanted to say is interrupting your guest. You never want to walk up to your table while your guest is chewing <laughs> and be like, so how's everything tasting? You know, like, um, or say, so how is everything? And like they're chewing and eating and it's just rude. Another thing is if you walk up to the table and they're engaged in conversation and maybe you want, I know you want to get on with the drink order or the appetizer order or the entree order or the wine order, or the drink order, or this, that, that. Did I say drink order twice? Probably did. But you don't want to interrupt the guests. A way to, a way to approach this is, is if, if, if people are at a table talking is to try to identify uh, anyone that you can talk to 
somewhat quietly and start getting the order. And that'll often bring the others around to, you know, to getting into order mode. Another way to do it is just to stand there and smile for, you know, five or ten seconds. And then if they keep talking, because they're either assholes or they're actually truly engaged in conversation and, you know, feel they're discussing something important, you can take out your check presenter or whatever you write your notes down and start going over your notes. You know what I mean? And do it positively, like, and you can even step back and do that too. And then step forward and look up again. And then you can just leave if they don't, if they're not ready then, then it's not your fault, it's not your problem. You're respecting and honoring the guests in their space. But you see how, you notice how that's much better than you trying to either interrupt or you just standing there and hovering and <laughs> creeping on them. So these are important. So obviously I can't, I can't give you uh, exact information on what to do in every scenario. But I can, but I can guide you with some principles, and hopefully um, you'll be able to come up with your own strategies for the things I don't cover here. Now, another thing is, if is if a table pays, right? Obviously, let let the table take their time. But if a table pays and they drop the check and they or they give it to you, don't open the check presenter right in front of them and look and see what kind of tip they left. Just don't do it. <laughs> Shouldn't have to say that, but I'm just you know just being thorough here. Never never let the guest. Again, if you ha if you have to imagine yourself that you are a slave, or you are a servant, and in Rome, or England, or Egypt, or you know I don't know, <laughs> ancient China or Japan or something ridiculous, if you have to a little bit to humble yourself and to deflate your ego and to make sure that you maintain your own professional modus operandi, which is sort of your your own operating system as a server, then do it. Because you want to, more often than not, you want to keep your job. I'm not saying always, because I've been fired, and it hasn't always been the worst thing for me. Sometimes it was the restaurant that was effed up, not me. Okay? Yeah, people make mistakes. We all make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying. So... It's a good philosophy to have, and they taught me that at one of the restaurants I worked at. So, go easy on yourself, and um, make the magic happen. You know, only you can invent your own personal guest experience. And as long as you have some of these principles and you realize to speak to the guest and treat the guest like they're number one, because that's your job, you know? You can go home after work and, and be number one, okay? But while you're at work, you're, you know, they're number one. So do your best job to give them the best experience and you'll make the most money and you'll develop the most skills that you'll be able to take with you whether you go to another waiting tables job, you start your own business, or you get a corporate career. I really value waiting tables and getting to do customer, ex customer service on that level you learn a lot. You just learn a lot of business skills and sales skills and people skills and understanding. Why do people make buying decisions? So important. So important. It's stuff they don't teach you in school. So, well, I think that'll cover it for uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Um, get out there and uh, and wow them. Get out there and make their day, make their night um, go better than what it would have had they not encountered your essence. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.